Welcome back. Now, I've been making videos on this platform, YouTube, for a little while now. And uh, one of the things that I couldn't appreciate enough about the open source software world is the level of accessibility that it gives for content creators to be able to realize their creative potential without shelling out a bunch of cash. Now, I preface this by saying that a lot of the tools that I'm gonna recommend in today's video are tools that I think are amazing. I've built a, a YouTube channel off of these tools and the workflow that I'm about to explain to you, hopefully, is helpful to you. Um, but at the same time, if you are in a financial position to donate to these projects, to improve them and help kick the tin along, then I definitely recommend that you do. So to that end, definitely check out the link in the description where I'll link these projects and where you can donate to if you can. But if you can't, then here are some great tools to help out a semi-pro YouTube workflow. Okay, so I'm gonna try and keep this fairly brief and to the point. But if you do wanna find more in-depth information about any of these things, then do let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can make a more detailed video about any part of this process. So, picking up exactly where that intro was just filmed, uh, I have a, a MP4 that is on an SD card straight out of the camera. So step one and the tools that I use for step one is the kind of the ingest process or getting all the media into the one spot. Now, uh, I'm not gonna tell you exactly how you should do this, but for me, whether you are on Mac, Windows or Linux, the idea here is that you just wanna get all the media for your project in the one folder and categorize it and name it in some useful way. So for me is I have uh, on a, a partition of my solid state drive, I'll have recent projects that I've been working on. So for example, uh, the apps you need project, which I realize a lot of you might be watching this video because of that video. And if you are, welcome to the channel, it's great to have you. Um, so I've got, all of my videos labeled by the number of video on the channel and then essentially what that video covers. Uh, now, obviously you don't get any sneak peeks as to what's coming up because I don't actually have any folders of future projects at this point. But in this, I will create a new folder for every new project. So in this case, we'll be up to project 368, shout out to Casey Neistat. Uh, and we will call it, what do we call it? Video workflow, because I haven't thought of a clicky enough title yet. Once I've created that folder, then whatever uh, media I have related to this project, so the screen recording that you're watching now, uh, the media from the SD card will all go into that folder. I did a couple of takes and also some takes from uh, the project, uh, the video, the last video that you saw on Plasma. So I'll jump back to that original video workflow folder and paste that in there. Uh, now, I'll also do the same if I go, if I end up trying to go and find uh, different uh, music or background elements or stock footage or whatever it is, I'll dump it all in this one folder. And that means that all of the media related to this project ends up in the one place. When it comes to the layout of the extra bits and pieces that I've got going on, if I have um, stock standard, uh, for example, uh, any graphical assets, for anything that I've worked in in the past. So you can see I've got logos of different things. I've found different PNGs of different icons and stuff. I keep them all in a folder called graphical assets and uh, including any like branded stuff that I've worked on in the past of my own brand or brands of other businesses that I've worked with, NordVPN for example. So uh, as well as that, I keep a folder of stock footage that I keep lying around. Most of my stock footage I get from uh, what is it? Pixabay, I believe it's called. Um, Pixabay has some great Creative Commons stock footage, but a lot of these icons and stuff I'll keep adding to, especially when it comes to thumbnails. So you can see these are all the assets that I dragged into the folder for the apps you need video, including the A-roll, the screen recording, um, and uh, any audio and that kind of thing. And it looks about the same for the uh, Plasma uh, 521 video that I did just recently, uh, including some of my old videos. So all of this is just how I keep the folders organized. Once I've got that organized, then it's time to uh, consider keeping it backed up because a lot of these uh, folders and files, you can see I've only got recent ones up to the last kind of five videos or so. This is just to save space. On an external hard drive, however, I have all of my channel's projects 
dating back a long, long way. Uh, and with the ones coming from the last three years or so uh, here in this IG folder. And you can see how I've got everything pretty much categorized as I mentioned before. I've come across uh, a lot of different backup systems, but the one that works best for you is the one that you know what it's doing. And to that end, I highly recommend that you check out Free File Sync. Uh, I believe it's available on Mac, Windows and Linux. And for the, uh, what you can do with Free File Sync is essentially synchronize two folders between two different places. Now for me, I have a hard drive and I also have a NAS, a network attached storage that uh, keeps backups of all of my stuff. So using Free File Sync, which for me, I can get it straight from the KDE Neon uh, software store here. So I'll quickly install that. It's pulling it in from Flathub and you can grab the latest version. If you're on a Linux distro, uh, go and check uh, Flathub and grab the flat pack of that. It won't take too long to install there. And once you're here in Free File Sync, apart from the fact that it looks but ugly right now, but I'll just leave it how it is. I'll fix that later. Um, on Mac and Windows and other Linux distros, it looks great. What you can do is uh, you can browse and find a particular folder that you wish to back up. So for example, I can open my, uh, my project folder that has all of the projects that I work on for this channel. Then I can also compare it with the uh, f exact same folder on my external hard drive. Now there are terminal commands that uh, can do this job for you and can even automate this whole process for you. Um, but again, I'm trying to recommend this for people that might be starting out and being able to have a tool that can really quickly compare the differences in two folders can be very, very powerful. Now, as you can see, it's come up with a lot of files that are on the external hard drive over on the right hand side that aren't on the internal SSD. And rather than synchronizing these folders both ways, which you could do, if you just wanted a straight one for one backup, you can actually just drop this list down and say update any files and folders that have been added since the last uh, log from the external hard drive can then be added over to uh, the right hand side. So in this case, any projects that I've added, that I've worked on since my last backup, in this case, uh, the last two videos I believe that I've worked on, uh, can now be backed up and it doesn't really matter kind of what system you have running uh, this should work and so now you can see that it'll, it'll give you a summary of what is going to happen when you hit the update button it's going to move 6.3 gigs and add those copy them over to the appropriate folder on my external hard drive. This maintains the file structure on my hard drive and makes it super easy for me to go back and access projects or assets from other projects very, very quickly without me having to worry about disk space on my main system. So that kind of covers the ingest and backup process. I'm going to let that run uh, just because it's been a while since I've done that anyway. Okay, next up, let's talk about the video editor. Now, I realize that on the Apps You Need video, I 100% still recommend uh, Caden Live as my go-to video editor. It's one that I've been using the most and uh, between the app image version is by far the most stable that I've found when it comes to all the different versions of Caden Live on Linux. On the Windows side of things, Caden Live is usually fairly stable for me. I haven't looked into the Mac side of things. So Mac people, you'll have to let me know how that goes for you. Actually, I don't even know if there is a Mac version of Caden Live. So that might be something to look into. Anywho, if you're starting out, uh, Caden Live, I think is a great middle ground between super professional, something like Olive or Cinerella GG or a bunch of others, and uh, and the more simple ones like OpenShot. Caden Live, um, basically for me at this point, I just grab whatever the folder is, of uh, media that I've sorted out already and just drag it straight in to Caden Live. So for example, I'll just open up the last project that I was working on, which was the Plasma one, and you can kind of have a look at what things look like. I'm not gonna go through a deep dive here into uh, the, the editing process and how I edit because that's a whole different ball of wax, but you can see here the timeline looks eh, fairly messy. Um, bits and pieces all over the shot. I kind of edit each video on a need to do basis. My main goal here is efficiency because I just don't have a lot of time to work on these things. Um, so Caden Live has been working really great for me. My computer is definitely going to start spinning up the fan though. So you could probably hear that in the background. The one thing that I will mention, if you're on Caden Live and you're on Linux, definitely check out the GPU testing uh, rendering settings because that chops your rendering time way down. Um, I've got my own little custom NVENC 
uh, profile here that um, is spitting out some very nice results that are great to look at, they sound great, and they have a decent file size making for timely uploads onto YouTube as well. Once I've edited the video and I have a finished product, it will usually then live in the project folder. The next step from here is obviously to work on a thumbnail. And for the thumbnails, I will usually use uh, either GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, or its very close cousin, Glimpse. At the moment, I'm using Glimpse because it has a few features, uh, not disabled, but it has a slightly more streamlined approach to, uh, to image editing, which I appreciate. So whether I am working with a, uh, like a blurred background uh, from the desktop, I'll usually just take a snapshot of a particular screen recording that I've done, or if I'm dealing with a uh, more of a, a um, like a, a posed sort of photo like this, then it just involves me using Glimpse or the GIMP to uh, create faded layers or blur the background a bit or bring in assets from the graphical assets folder that I use um, or other bits and pieces to try and highlight whatever it is that I want to do with video. Lately, I've been focusing on having some big uh, text featuring on part of the image that's like a bit disconnected from the title of the video because I used to duplicate those things a lot. Um, and then on the other side, I'll put like a logo or something that's recognizable. Uh, and that's kind of the theory behind the thumbnails there. And once I have that project saved, um, all, of the, all of the bits and pieces, the individual pieces that you can see here in Glimpse are then saved as a part of that project file. So I can then, if I want to use say this Magia logo again, I can open up this project file, copy that, and then paste it into a new project um, and then attach that to a new layer. So it seems to work pretty well for me. And I've always used GIMP uh, or Glimpse as my go-to uh, image editor for making thumbnails. Now I've heard great things about Critter, but I just haven't used it personally. The main criticism that GIMP and the Glimpse image editor get is that they have, uh, that the editing style is, is destructive in that uh, if you make a change to a particular file, uh, unless you undo that change, it, uh, it rather than creating a new layer, it destroys the layer underneath by default. So keep that in mind but it works pretty well for me. Again, keep in mind that each of these applications are free and open source and available on all main platforms. The exception of Caden Live, take that one with a grain of salt. There is OpenShot and there are other free and open source video editors out there that do work on Mac, uh, but yeah, it's worth mentioning. Uh, finally, if I need to do any extra uh, audio recordings, it'll always be through Audacity just because it gives great results and it has a robust set of uh, tools to manipulate that audio. Finally, the last bit of the puzzle is to just go in and uh, keep a record of any uh, notes that I use into the descriptions or any uh, script notes or anything that I want to include from Simple Note, which is my go-to uh, just note-taking app that I use to keep track of everything. Um, anything that I've included in here from the script or anything that I want to include in the video description just comes and gets copy pasted into here um, so that I can refer to it later. And especially if I'm working with another brand uh, on a sponsorship thing and they want to review the content or if I need to make any changes, then rather than having to uh, constantly redo the video descriptions and timestamps and everything, I can just copy paste it all from that simple note uh, tab all the way back into um, to the browser. And that pretty much sums up the process from start to finish with how it's working at the moment. And honestly, it's been working like this on this channel for a long time now. Some of the gear has changed as we've gone um, and gear, gear can come and go, but I think the fundamentals are there. Um, get all your media in one place at the ingest, make sure that you have a really robust and predictable backup solution so that you don't lose any of your assets and then move into the editing phase. Once you've done the editing phase, you can work on thumbnail and title and promotion, um, social media, all that kind of stuff. And then keep a record of the stuff that you have posted uh, and any of the text that's associated with that post so that if you do have to make changes, you can easily copy paste it out. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, you could apply that model to a lot of different genres here on YouTube. Um, the one thing that I will mention is obviously specific to me and what I do, because I do a lot of screen capture, OBS is, is amazing. I'm aware that on, um, on Windows, Streamlabs is also really uh, popular amongst uh, video game streamers, and I totally get why, because it has a lot more uh, gamer-friendly features built into it. Um, and that is in itself built on OBS. So for me, OBS does all that I need it to, and I just have it set up with a simple uh, screen recording here with the video window up here from the webcam and the audio coming from the mic and from the desktop. And that's kind of all I've got going on. OBS, there's a lot to it. I'm not gonna get into it here, but if you're just looking for a quick screen recorder that works on every platform, definitely start with OBS and see how you go. Well, that'll do it for me. I hope that was helpful for someone out there. And if you're coming off the apps we need or the apps you need video, then once again, welcome to the channel. Definitely go check out what, what are the other stuff that I have going on here. Showcasing alternatives is what it's all about. So yeah, that's me and I'll catch you all in the next one. 